Hey friendo, Steve here. Welcome back to Wrestle Juice. As you can see, I've got the tier rank next to me and all the wrestlers that we're going to talk about and rank today on the show. This particular tier rank was uh, created by my friendos over at Cultaholic. Love them. Shout out to Cultaholic. Go sub to their channel. They're awesome. Uh, I did change the categories, though. They had uh, the, the Cultaholic categories. I've got some Triple H categories. So as you can tell, uh, I've got... Uh, starting at the top, the S tier, the cream of the crop, is uh, Evolution. Because my personal favorite sort of Triple H era was probably his Evolution era. I think a lot of people consider that as sort of a top tier version of Triple H. Sort of, I should have put this as Reign of Terror because I'm sure Triple H considers that the best era of his career. But it kind of overlaps. After that, so that Evolution is sort of like the best, right? That's like the top ranking. After that, I've got the game, which was like his 1999 sort of reformation. And that's when he really came into his own. He won the WWF title for the first time and many other times uh, between that era, like 99 and 2002 when Evolution started. So um, that's sort of the next level on the tier rank. And then I've got 1998 Triple H, which, yeah, he was sort of leading DX and things were going well. But like he hadn't really like reinvented himself to be a main event level guy. He was still firmly upper mid card Triple H and he needed to turn that corner. So that mid level right there is just sort of like, OK, good job. Not great. Not bad. Just sort of mid level Triple H right there. And then, of course, we've got the two lower categories authority promo, which is like, yeah, this isn't great. This we don't we don't need this. We don't need a 20 minute authority promo kicking off raw. That's not great. But then the absolute worst of the worst, the garbage, the lowest tier possible is, of course, Triple H's warrior match at WrestleMania 12. The absolute low light of his career when Warrior uh, squashed him in like 12 seconds or 14 seconds or 90 seconds, whatever it was enough time for him to no sell a pedigree and then hit a stupid Warrior splash on Triple H. So. Basically, I took Triple H's career and I used those to make my tier rank uh, criteria. Let's go ahead and dive into it. First up, uh, let's go ahead with, man, this one's really tough. I'm going to go with the last one here, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt came back in such a spectacular way. The actual return was absolutely evolution tier with the, uh, what is it, the QR code stuff and like the white rabbit and the Jefferson airplane and all the clues. And then his actual return, everybody was huge into it. He had that awesome new song. And then they were actually, they actually had to figure out what to do with all that. And it just sort of ended up culminating in a feud with LA Knight that really LA Knight got the better of. And Bray Wyatt, he was just locked into a promotional match, the Mountain Dew pitch black match. Um, hard to call this. S tier, but also it's not quite warrior match. Uh, this is a tough one. I'm going to say based on the uh, you, you can't go more than mid, honestly. And I hate doing that because I don't think Bray Wyatt is a mid level anything. I think he's terrific. I really do. I just think that they really need to sit down and figure out what the hell to do with him before they actually start doing it. So I'm going to put Bray Wyatt there on the mid-level because you can't do much more than that. Uh, I would say this. So, I mean, you got to consider, let's look at some of the successes, okay? <laughs> look, okay, number one, Max Dupree becoming L.A. Knight. That's S-tier. I'm sorry, but this is work. Triple H understood this guy can get himself over. Why is he whispery Max Dupree? That doesn't make any sense. Of course, LA Knight is evolution tier. He's S tier. That is, that's really, really good stuff right there. Um, let me go with another S tier guy, and that's going to be Solo Sokoa. He had his main roster debut at, uh, what was it, Clash of the Castle, I think, there with uh, helping uh, Roman Reigns beat Drew McIntyre. So you got Solo Sokoa there, also evolution tier, but not top of the top. Top of the top is clearly LA Knight. That's like top of evolution tier right there. Now we've got, there's probably, look, my guess right now, looking at looking at all these is going to be like a lot of mid-level stuff. So like, for example, you've got Johnny Gargano and Dexter Loomis. They're probably going to be 98. 
Like, I think, you know, like there hasn't been like Gargano. Gargano's been injured a bunch, so it's difficult to really say, oh, this has been like a really like a garbage thing for for Johnny Gargano. I do feel like Candice LeRae, you can kind of consider her authority promo. That's probably not been great. Um, oh, but okay. I mean, look, obviously, clearly, <laughs> obviously, Hit Row has been Warrior match status. I mean, look, all they do is just take losses. They take humiliating losses. Michael Cole runs down top dollar for his ill-advised tope over the top rope. Uh, that one time, like the dude did it fine a bunch of times. He just fucked up once. And Michael Cole gives him endless shit. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, Hit Row clearly is down here. Um, this one right here, Vinny Vinci. I mean, you can, what is Giovanni Vinci? I guess, I guess, man, this is really difficult because like, what are their criteria? Where was he before? He was, uh, he was uh, Giovanni, he was the, uh, the, the, the Vittoria guy. Fabian Eichner is who he actually is. But then they kept his name Giovanni Vinci, and he was like a model guy in NXT. And I don't know. I kind of feel like that might have had a ceiling. But now he's just henchman for the uh, Imperium as opposed. You know what? No, nah, man, I'm going to put this down here. He's he's the guy in Imperium that takes losses. And I don't know if he's ever going to get out of that situation. Whereas when he was in NXT uh under Shawn Michaels he looked like he was a guy who might have had some success he had a goofy gimmick but like sometimes gimmicks just start off as goofy so I don't know coming up to main roster and being a henchman for Gunther and you're not even the guy who gets to introduce Gunther like Kaiser is I don't know that's 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 great for him personally but he is on TV um damage control I'm gonna put up here uh as sort of like the really good thing right because everybody likes damage control. They're on TV a lot. They didn't get nearly the push they should have had to bring them up to evolution tier. But EO Sky won money in the bank. Bailey is right there. She's always in high profile feuds. And then Dakota Kai. Everybody likes Dakota Kai. She's injured right now. So who knows how that situation is going to turn out. But they had a very big debut. They had their big SummerSlam debut. And it was sort of like the big like Triple H. Okay, we know that Triple H is in charge because he's really bringing up some of his favorites. Um, and so that was like a big moment for for like Triple H sort of being in charge. So yeah, damage control. I'm going to put here really good. Probably not the push that they should have got. I feel like Bailey should have won that title off Bianca, but they're also trying to establish a bunch of new records here. So I get it. Um, one, I'll, I'll give this one. So like you got Legato. Let's talk about Legato here really quick. We're just going to put Legato in the midsection really quick. So Legato is now the LWO with Rey Mysterio at the head of things. They are, I'm going to put them here at the end of like really good because it is really good for them. But also like they're not the most interesting crew in the world. Zelina Vega had that awesome moment at Backlash. A lot of people like her. I really like Zelina Vega. I think she's great. The tag team of Del Toro and Cruz kind of going nowhere but it's hard to say that like you can't put them on the same level as gargano and loomis man i don't even know about gargano and loomis now that i'm thinking about it i kind of feel like the entire way needs to be down here because like they're really doing a whole lot of nothing like loomis had that feud with the miz but then it's like he just falls into what what do you do with that guy um gallows and anderson came back that was cool they're with the OC. You can't put them anywhere but mid. Same with Mia Yim, Mi Chin. I thought that was good. I'm saving Cross for last. I feel bad for this guy, Braun Strowman. He came back and had some cool stuff with Ricochet, but like, I apparently he's got like he's got some health issues. Like he, he's talked about like what 15 percent of one of his legs is he can't feel or is paralyzed or something like that. And I feel bad for the guy. He's tweeted out stuff like, "Man, I really miss." I really miss not being around more. Uh, Emma also sort of down here. Like, uh, yeah. Look, I mean, right here that we're looking at, we're looking at sort of guys and gals who were brought back for kind of a specific purpose, not to get pushed or not to get wins. 
Although I think in Braun's situation, more has to do with his injuries than anything. I think I think Braun actually put a lot of wear and tear on his body since like 2017, 2016, 2017. Whenever he had his big like singles push, I think there's been a lot of like wear and tear on his body, and it sucks because I like Braun Strowman. Uh, Valhalla can't put her anywhere but mid. Um, I know Sarah Logan was, you know, uh, part of the Riot Squad and everything. But I never really felt like she was going to go anywhere past like Ruby or Liv Morgan. So now she's with the Viking Raiders who kind of exist to to get other acts over. But they're still kind of cool. They still get treated really well. They have a really cool entrance. Uh, Tegan Knox, oh, man, until I see it, she's sort of like the women's division version of Hit Row. Like uh, she's not getting any pushes. Not really going anywhere. Maybe that can change, and I hope it does. I know Triple H really seemed to like Tegan Knox, but I guess it's a wait and see thing. This one's kind of interesting. Elias, I don't know. Is he injured right now? I have no idea what's going on with Elias. Like, he came back and he had like feuds and stuff. Uh, I mean, he hey, they brought him back from being Ezekiel, which I kind of like the Ezekiel stuff. So I, mid, he's not he's not on TV. I don't know why he's not on TV. He's pr- he might be injured, like he's been on TV. He was uh, he was mentoring. Uh, who was he mentoring? He was mentoring somebody who was a dullard, who was meant to be like a dummy, and it was uh, oh, it was Boogs. Yeah, where's Boogs? Where is Boogs? Is Boogs injured? Why is Boogs not on TV? That guy's killing it. That guy's great. I'm so sad about that. Last time we saw Boogs, he was teaming with LA Knight, and LA Knight threw him in the trash. All right. Now, this is going to be difficult here. Karrion Cross, the guy with the big entrance. He, he was brought back, uh, uh, and he attacked Drew McIntyre. But then something happened to him. He just started, like, taking losses. And, like, every time there's a big match... He just loses it. He is what we refer to over at Going In Raw as a depth guy. A guy who's kept strong enough to eat losses against bigger opponents. So Karrion Cross, as a depth guy, is still kept strong enough to be in the mid-tier. But he, he's not any further along than that. In fact, I would put him... He has gotten wins, but they're not like major wins. I'd put him right here next to Bray Wyatt. And I feel like Bray Wyatt should have gone further. Bray Wyatt was not brought back to eat losses, but he was brought back and then done, and they did absolutely nothing with him, which is kind of on par with Karrion Cross. They brought him back for a specific reason, to take losses to bigger names. But it's clear they don't have bigger plans for Cross. In fact, even AEW didn't have big plans for Cross. But AEW wanted to bring Cross in to job him out to Wardlow. So maybe that's just his lot. He they, he hasn't really like adapted his in ring wrestling style to fit anything like that really works in WWE. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know what the issue is. He's a great promo. He's got a great look. Scarlett looks like a million bucks. He looks like a million bucks. He has a great head of hair. I don't know why they don't want to push this guy more. I really don't. Is it because of the in-ring stuff? I don't know. All right, last up, Bronson Reed. I'm actually going to go a little controversial here maybe with Bronson Reed. I think Bronson Reed has been doing some really good work lately. I think it seems clear that they kind of like Bronson Reed and and they have some plans for him. So I'm going to put him ahead of the LWO here. Because, I mean, at least the LWO, they get plenty of TV time. Boy, it hurts to put them here. They really, like, the LWO really should be, like, kind of <laughs> behind. The LWO should be right here, really. Like, it, it, Santos just works better as a bad guy. But they're probably making all sorts of money off merch. Hopefully, they're seeing some merch checks from that LWO stuff. They get to wear the shirts. They should see the merch money. But, like, Santos is cold. He is so cold as a good guy. So I don't know about any of that. Uh, but Bronson, yeah, Bronson's sort of in the same sphere as, as damage control. I feel like Bronson was brought back to be a depth guy to take take losses against bigger names. But then, like, they had him to uh, take a, a beat like Shinsuke Nakamura. And I feel like they think that there's still plenty of upside on Bronson Reed. That's why I put him up here on the second tier, on the game tier on the really good tier. 
not quite a solo Sokoa or an LA Knight. Where would you guys, would you, let me ask you this. This is a question for the comments here. Number one, of course, let me know what you guys think about any of this. Is any of this off? I'd actually put Fabian Eichner. Yeah, no, that's right. That's probably right. Um, Solo Sokoa or LA Knight, who's in a better position right now? Who would you rather be, Solo Sokoa or LA Knight? That's the big question of the day. Let me know in the comments below. There we go. That's what it is. That's my tier rank. Shout out to the guys at Cultaholic for making that because I was thinking about doing this as a tier rank. I might have subconsciously stumbled upon their video and then was like, I'm going to do one of my own. But I just sort of was like, oh, that'd be kind of cool to do Triple H because I heard the other day that Carrying Cross were coming up on a year. But yeah, SummerSlam, we're coming up on a year. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Check out this other video over here and we'll see you around.